His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. The cup goes to Frank McClintock and the Arsenal. The sheer magnitude of Arsenal's double achievement was almost overshadowed by the suspense and drama of winning both trophies in the last six days of the season. Yet ten months earlier, there was little evidence that Frank McClintock and his men would rewrite the history books. Before the season had started, Peter Simpson and John Samuels had suffered serious injuries. Charlie George had broken his ankle in the first game. But slowly, a side of great character took shape, with a new kid called Kennedy fitting in well. Played and played very well and turned on nicely there by George Graham. Graham again, number 11. Good Arsenal move building up here now as Kelly looks to put it in, but now Rice, perhaps he'll get a chance to put it into that penalty area. Oh, and beaten all up. Hennessy well, losing the ball and Rice still going on. And Derby getting themselves into all sorts of trouble there. Now Kelly. Kelly's training high for there, and a good cross by Eddie Kelly. Arsenal's best move of the match so far. Well, it seems that the shouted match on the terrace has got a little more warmth and passion to it than the match on the pitch itself. But here's Radford. And a break by Armstrong and McFarlane getting there first, and Kelly again. as he pounced on that pass back took it round this green and quickly found the back of that Derby County net to put Arsenal ahead Armstrong with Derby he was offside but the linesman keeping his flank down Armstrong still going on and just failing to poke that one through by the near post While Derby were waiting and half a feeling, Armstrong was going on and three men converging on him just to prevent him scoring. Arsenal slow. George Graham. That's aimed towards Radford. Up he goes! Oh, Radford! My goodness, what a leap! Beautifully timed there. The cross from Graham. And Radford leaping superb to time it and head it into that derby net for number two. So Arsenal two ahead with 20 minutes of the second half gone. Always a restless afternoon for Don Hall out his seat again. Beating Durban, a little flick there wide of Hector. Beautiful play. This is much better now from Arsenal. McDowell, Bradford, McDowell. Turn there under that cross. Now let's meet our guest, George Armstrong, and let me tell you first of all how he came to be our guest. Uh, we went into the Arsenal dressing room at the end of the match yesterday and asked the players who they would most like to see from their team on the programme today. Unanimously, they plumped for George Armstrong, saying his form over the last couple of months has been fabulous. Here's George with Jimmy Hill. Well, George, that's, that's praise indeed from your own that's teammates. Uh, to thank the lads myself on Monday, I think. You won't share the fee with them, will you? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I'm not. <laughs> George, how long have you been at Arsenal? Well, this is my 10th season now, Jimmy. And how do you feel the club has progressed in that time? I mean, are Arsenal as great now, as, as good as they've ever been? Well, in that time, I've certainly seen good individuals, but this team at the present time is the best I've played in. What is there about the team that makes it extra special? Well, it's just the spirit in the team. Everybody's fighting for one another. And that's about it. You know, they've got faith in each other. And there's a lot of skill in the team, actually, as well. I'm glad you mentioned that, because some Arsenal fans feel that the, you know, there still isn't enough skill in the middle of the field. Do you think there is skill there? Well, I suppose every team's got room for improvement, but at the moment, I can't see anybody getting our team at the moment, you know. By the end of November, Simpson and Samuels were back as the pursuit of Leeds, the championship favourites, continued. Bradford. One towards the near post, and the heads are there. And Kennedy very nearly in a position to turn it in. And 
behind, winning a corner, Ray Kennedy, badly wanting a goal, although he's uh, the top scorer with 13, he's only scored one goal in the last seven games for Arsenal, now on that Liverpool goal line, waiting for Armstrong's corner. Kelly was right in there, Simpson, and a little too far ahead for anybody in that Arsenal attack. McClintock organising things at the back and for once uh, coming forward with the reserves watching and there's such a tremendous competition here at Arsenal for first team places. Charlie George, you notice the long hair in the middle and on the right of course Peter Marinello. And that wall surely has got to move back a little further but just chipped in there and Lloyd not getting it away. Scoring first and through. And a ricochet off the Liverpool defence. Scorey really caught it. A little too ambitious that one too. And Armstrong following in perfectly as Lindsay hesitated. Beating Hughes. There's the cross. Samuels. Radford. And it'll come to McNabb. Men are waiting in the middle. And so is Lindsay. Straight to Samuels on the half volley. Koshak penalised, Arsenal's free kick. McClintock, Radford. Story trying to push his way through Kennedy now. But John Samuels! <laughs> he really is in the mood for it this afternoon, Samuels. And it looks there's any Kelly who's going on. is going off and George Graham Kelly just sitting down at the back there off the field and now with the throw pass in midfield by Peter Storey. Tremendous run by uh, Steve Highway there. Can't be many faster men in football than him. I think we've, we're not playing just as well as we were, say, three or four weeks ago. But uh, if you're going to try and win a championship or challenge for a championship, you'll have sticky spells and sometimes you'll be a little bit lucky and other times you'll, you'll probably be unlucky. Like I thought we were a few weeks ago against Crystal Palace. I thought we played well enough to win and we didn't get the result and we were a little bit disappointed. But um, 
Well, well his now, leaders at yesterday, Shepherd, yesterday you didn't get the goal early on against this mm. defence, but of course, when you did get it, Bill Shankly said it was offside. Mm. Uh, we can now look and see exactly how it came about. Well, the Arsenal forwards here do a lot of challenging here, putting the defence under pressure. I think that's John Samuels, just wins the ball there to George Graham. George draws the man in, plays it to John Samuels, and a beautiful chip over his head. And you can see George is well onside, and he connects with a beautiful volley. And there's no chance of that ball being offside there, Jimmy, I don't think. No chance at all. It's indicative, really, of the Arsenal method. The, the way in which you put defences under pressure to, to win the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think sometimes the sports really understand this because they look upon you as a hard grinding side, mm -hmm. but you have to win it before you can play that kind of football. Of course you do, and it's very difficult to keep this sort of um, tackles in. You know, if you're diving from one player to another, you have to get it done collectively by your forwards or else you'll just get shattered after 20 minutes. And you can see just from that goal there, there was about three players involved there. There was Peter Storey, John Samuels and George Graham, and eventually we win the ball, a good one too, and it finished up with a goal. Yet after dropping only two points in 12 games, the year ended in wintry frustration. Simpson. A drop away. Armstrong. Kennedy with Graham's line to the middle, and Radford's already there. Here's Graham again, the back header. for it and finding that Fisher is finding just as hard but Armstrong winning that one taking on Kirk of again another good little cross there by Armstrong Redford going in and Martin getting it fractionally above his head now it's gone up for it Rice is there Graham with his head oh and he just over that bar because Martin was a fraction off his line That really was a good header by Graham. Just a fraction too high for all these Arsenal fans and Arsenal hopes. Looks like he's breathing fire as well. And Kennedy going to take up his position in that penalty area. Now the ball through with Scorey. Radford on the turn. Oh, he did well there and so did Martin. That really was a shot out of the blue and Martin almost cold, I would think. Grabbed it very well indeed. McNabb. Armstrong to Graham. Kennedy coming for this one. Radford trying to take it. Oh, the turn! Oh, against the post! Well, they really had none of the luck there, but they're still keeping up this pressure. Graham. Armstrong completely free on his left. Here's Armstrong to Curl. McClintock, Kennedy, Kirk of Challenge by Armstrong, good work by Armstrong, oh and what superb work by Radford, they very nearly made something out of nothing there, Armstrong, high again in that Southampton penalty area, and Martin has lost it, and Radford is no, not given, not given, the referee has disallowed it,
Once more the high one. Once more Radford Dane. And once more. Samuel Hill save once more by Martin. Everybody bar Wilson now in the Southampton half of the field. Kennedy going in. And Radford. So Arsenal drop a point, but they're now winning some unexpected admirers. That's it, give a smile to the viewers. They're a lovely smile, and now ask a question. Uh, who do you think are the main challenges for the league? Well, I, 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 Leeds are in a very, very good position, but I think Arsenal will uh, will probably win the title this year, the way they're playing. I know it's uh, it may be the wrong thing to say back home, folks, about <laughs> but uh, they look very good to me, Arsenal, this year, actually. They play very well against Tottenham, and they look uh, a very good bet, I think, to, uh, to challenge Leeds for the title. And George Graham would hardly disagree with that, as Arsenal and Leeds made the championship look like a two-horse race, with Leeds still the favourites. But now it was FA Cup time. Arsenal were drawn away from home in the third round, and they were going to get used to that in the next four months. Non-League Yeovil were their first opponents, where the infamous slope was less of a problem than the snow. A cash record set for a match on a Southern League ground, but the game was postponed for four days. So an enforced winter break for Arsenal, a weekend off in what was going to be a season of 64 matches, two games a week for the last 10 weeks, and what Don Howe called a killing pace. This was to be the calm before the storm, and they still had to beat Yeovil. It's never crossed your mind that you might lose this game, not even in a nightmare. Well, it's, I've thought about it, it'd be a terrible thing for Arsenal if we did get beaten. It's, it is a possibility, I wouldn't say it isn't, but um, I think it's very unlikely. And when they did play, that thriving partnership of John Radford and Ray Kennedy did the trick. And three days later, it was back to the lead. First game in 1971, a victory over a weakened West Ham side at Highbury. West Ham were without more Greaves, Best and Deer after a breach of disciplinary rules. But that was followed by away defeats at Huddersfield and Liverpool. Then back home with 20-year-old Charlie George, now fit again. The referee today, Bill Gower Swansea, and now we bring you those first half highlights. The crowd is 46,000. Now Arsenal away again with Armstrong. Will this be it? Oh my goodness, what a save by that! McNabb's throw. Lines are flagging, the referee saying, I saw you, look, we're going on. McNabb, stopped by Booth. Lee coming back to help him. Then Lee losing it to Armstrong. McNabb again. Kennedy. Turning it again over that crossbar. And my goodness, Corrigan was pushed right at the end there. That really was a, spe a spectacular piece of goalkeeping at the end. But a speculative shot in the first place by Ray Kennedy. And almost getting it in there. Redford and kicked off the line with the whistle and gone. The whistle had gone and one can only assume that it was for an infringement on Corrigan, the goalkeeper, Arsenal throw, Jeffries almost disappears into the crowd. In fact, he might well have injured himself there, but Arsenal going on, Heslop losing it, Samuels going in, and Corrigan down very quickly indeed. Bell, pouncing on that one, to Oakes, or rather to Lee, no, Lee now leaving it for Oakes. Oh yeah, getting up. And Doyle right up there as well, and Simpson giving him the treatment as Doyle looked in a position to try what could have been a difficult overhead shot for Bob Wilson to judge. And so it's Armstrong, Kennedy streaking on the head of him, and Armstrong with Bloom as well. Now to Radford, and Rice coming up fast on the right. Good cross by Rice, Kennedy at the far side, not just there but to push it in. like a corner to me coming off Corrigan but uh, neither the referee nor the linesman would give anything other than a goal kick to Manchester City. Rice who made a marvellous break down the right.
McNabb with Bell and Arsenal getting in each other's way Heslop Jeffrey is a bit muddled and finally out into a bit of space for Francis Lee Bell is henchman is up with him but that's not the sort of pass to find for it Bell Charlie George now for the Arsenal Armstrong George has gone off for a beautifully flighted ball from Armstrong to Radford beautiful stop and Samuels coming up hard on the other side George trying to turn it back in and Samuels getting it back this time as far as Rice that really was a brilliant build up there by the Arsenal and that's Sydney has still not out of the wood Jeffries and now Story keeping up this pressure a deep one this time Manchester City, it's Bowyer now, putting it inside the ball, back to look for Bell, oh, saved by Wilson, Bowyer going in again, and saved again by Wilson, twice that last one, the bench hesitated, and twice Wilson is so short, and Alan Oakes with it, Bowyer again getting there, Bell! Just have got a touch to it. Only five minutes left now. Oaks to Doyle. And now to Lee, who really hasn't had very much to do in the second half. Samuels. Arsenal mounting another attack. Simpson. But now has gone down the left foot. Simpson going on. And going on again. A good looking drive! Once again, pursuing victory right to the end. But there were still question marks about the Gunners from some. Well, Bob, that was a vital two points for Arsenal yesterday. It put you right back in the picture when everybody was sort of writing off the first division race. Uh, what has been behind this bad spell that the uh, critics have been suggesting you've had? Well, I don't really think we've had such a bad spell, Jim. Um, we've, we haven't played as well as we can. And one or two players might have lost a little bit of confidence, but... Uh, I don't think there's any team in the country can play 42 good games a season. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have indifferent games, you know. Yeah. And um, we've had two or three little bit indifferent where we've played well in the first half and gone off in the second, or played badly in the first half and, and come back in the second. How do you lose confidence when you're riding high as you are in the cup, in the uh, Fairs Cup? You know, you're there in every competition. How are you going to lose confidence? Well, you tell me. I, I don't really know. But uh, I think I lost a little bit of confidence a couple of weeks back. But, uh, Feel okay. And yesterday, the most exciting man I think that we've seen for some time to emerge, the new Charlie George, came out and really delighted the crowd. This is one of the skills that, uh, that really, I think, sets the Arsenal team alive. He reminded me so much of Johnny Haynes in his passing ability, but there's more there too. Look at that off the outside of the foot. A beautiful pass to set up that attack. But his ability to hit long passes quickly is the thing that impressed me. No trouble at all. 40 yards and straight to a target. And when it's necessary in the middle of the field, he can think quickly, play off, there's a lovely bit of skill, play off a delicate ball and keep the attack going. I liked his running too. I thought there was a different determination about him yesterday. There's a run through and look at the danger behind that ball across the goal line. 
But once again, we go back to the long through ball. This one, once he's made the space for himself, left foot doesn't quite find the target. But we can look at two now that do. The highlight of the day for me, long passes. First of all, what about that skill with the toe there? Straight to their target, giving Kennedy that chance. And finally, another opportunity, and for me, the best ball of the lot. We'll see now coming up. In the middle of the field, just a moment to see where it's got to go. And how about that one, finding Kennedy in that space? 11 days later, Arsenal beat Manchester City again, away from home this time, in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Back in the league, it was Ipswich Town next, and Arsenal raced into a 3-0 half-time lead through goals from Frank McClintock, John Radford and Charlie George. They were in a hurry, and they needed to be. Leeds had opened up a seven-point gap at the beginning of the month, and although Arsenal had games in hand, the margin for error had disappeared. But Arsenal had more than their own form to encourage them. Leeds had been knocked out of the FA Cup by 4th Division Colchester. Yet in the second half here, a former Arsenal player made them rethink things. Jimmy Robertson pulled two goals back for struggling Ipswich to put the game unnecessarily in the balance. Arsenal still clearly the better side, but for once they'd mislaid the ruthlessness for which they were now feared. This was to be followed by a defeat at Derby, then a very impressive win at Wolves, the start, they said, of that gruelling sprint to the finishing line. Every game now attracting big crowds and special atmospheres, like the one at Selhurst Park for the third match of the season with Crystal Palace. What an atmosphere too, Hoagley. Still Hoagley, a flick now for Kemba, can he turn it back? He can, and Birchall going in for it, but McClintock getting ahead to it. But now, running as far as Sewell. Kemba again, still Palace piling it on, just against the ball, and Stark just passed. My goodness, how close. hysteria a clear win here but in the cup it had taken a replay and a charlie george goal to reach the last four but first it's the fa cup semi-final the hillsborough copper tumble of noise and color for this one arsenal against stoke those fellas up there are the arsenal supporters at that end of the ground and first of all let's have a look at the arsenal team for this semi-final and arsenal are unchanged as expected the only thing that needed settling was the substitute and john samuels gets that place instead of eddie kelly a semi-final with two great goalkeepers for Arsenal, of course, Bob Wilson, a man who somehow epitomizes the unspectacular yet reliable qualities of Arsenal. As for Stoke City, something of a surprise to find Mahoney brought in at seven, Greenoff takes the four shirt, Skeels goes back to two, and fullback Marsh becomes the sub. But if Arsenal have Bob Wilson, Stoke have Gordon Banks, their skipper and the world's number one. 
The crowd is 55,000 strong. They've paid 80,000 pounds for this one. The referee, Pat Partridge of Middlesbrough. So a quarter the scope. For those who take them from both sides. No one again. Smith getting in. On right there as well. And scoring! Number one goalkeeper in the world. 